What's the worst mistake I've ever made? How many pets do I actually have? And what should you look for when you're looking for things to upcycle? Those are just a few of the questions I got when I asked on Facebook if anyone had any questions for me. I've got my cup of tea, I've got my questions, so let's get into them. So how and when did I get started in upcycling? It was about eight years ago and it was the first time in my adult life that I'd actually lived anywhere for any length of time. From about 18 to 33, I'd lived in about 10 different places. It's always much more satisfying when you can see the fruits of your labour in your own home as well. So the first piece I ever painted was a mirror that had a peacock stencil on it. And in fact, when I came to part with it many years later, it was used for someone's wedding, which I thought was really special. And another of my first pieces that I made was simply assembling some apple crates together to create some shelves. And they went down very well with my cats, who were then kittens. So why did I start a YouTube channel? Essentially, it was just to create a different style of tutorial to accompany my blog, teaandforgetmenots.com. I already made short Instagram videos of my tutorials, so it was a natural step moving on to YouTube just to be able to make them longer form and therefore more helpful for people so that they could be more in depth. What has been the easiest project that I've done? So I'm taking this really as there's been no surprises, no mistakes, no challenges. So something that was just straightforward. And the one that springs to mind is a bookshelf I made for a nursery with some beautiful decoupage paper on the back. It's a simple square unit, so easy to paint, especially if you remove the back like I did. Then a square decoupage at the back and simply reattached. I had no problems with the decoupage, no problems with the colours or the top coat or the sanding. So that was really nice, straightforward and simple and it's always very satisfying when that's the case because it rarely ever is. What piece am I most proud of? So for this one it's still in my home so I will quickly show you what I'm most proud of. So my favourite piece, I can just about hold it, is this lavender and bees chair. This was absolutely a labour of love, sanding it back to raw wood. And then applying the furniture transfer was comparatively a breeze, but it took so many hours to get to that point. But I love the chair, it's still in my house, and one that I'm proud of because it took so long and I finally accomplished it, and also it's just really pretty. I really like projects like that one because quite often I'll get questions such as, oh, I've only got one chair, or I've only got two chairs, they don't really make a set, what can I do? Well, if you can make a really pretty statement chair, then it doesn't matter if it's just one or if it's two because they just need to stand by themselves and be individual in some way. So what should you look for when you are looking for something to upcycle? So this does depend on whether or not it's something for your own home or something to sell. Now, if it's something for your own home, then of course look for the things you like and the things that you need, and then that is a good starting point. So if you're looking to sell, you do need to think about different things. You need to think about what is likely to sell in the area that you're in and also what is generally trendy and fashionable at the moment so people might be looking for them. If you want to know what has sold in your area, you can look on Facebook Marketplace under what has sold and then you'll see what things are consistently moving quite quickly and that is a good starting point. So regardless of the specific piece of furniture that you're looking for, you want to be thinking about the condition and the price as well. If the condition is anything less than average, probably skip it because the work that is going to be required to get it up to a decent state might be more effort than the money that you're going to get back for it. In addition, the price. So if you're already buying it at a price that is roughly what you might sell it for, then skip it. You need to be making a reasonable profit because of your time, and your supplies that you're putting into it. So how many pets do I actually have? Now I'm pretty sure I was asked this question because my pets appear in quite a few of my videos. So I have three pets. I have two cats and they are sisters and they're eight years old. Firstly I've got Pastel who is my gingery kind of cat. She likes to come and cause mischief in quite a lot of my videos and that is mostly because she just likes to be around me. So if I'm sat down for a second she takes that as an opportunity to come and play with me or sit with me. 
And secondly, I've got Pixel, and she is essentially the boss of the house. For someone who doesn't pay any of the bills, she certainly has a lot to say about how it should be run. <laughs> and lastly, my dog Puzzle. You might not have seen him as much because if I was to paint around him a lot of the time, his tail would end up in lots of different colours. So he tends to pop up when I'm trying to take final photos of pieces of furniture, as he likes to just say, um, hello, are you paying me attention? So, you know, I have to get the job done quick so I can get back to paying him attention. Where do you look for pieces to upcycle? This is actually one of my most popular blog posts ever, so I'll link it below so you can get a bit more information about it. Essentially, I have probably three favourite places to look. First of all, charity shops or thrift shops. These actually are getting a bit more expensive now, but you can still get some really unique and special pieces of furniture on them. You just might have to pay a little bit more than you used to. And secondly, of course, there's a Facebook marketplace, which there's just so much on offer. And what is so great about it is that you can just search far and wide. And if you're looking for a specific piece, then depending on your search area, there's a good chance you will eventually find it. And lastly, another great treasure trove can be Recycle. And that is essentially a free platform for passing on things you no longer need. This does depend on how active your local area is as to how good it is. But for me, I've both found and given some really nice things. So it's a nice bit for your community as well. So what has been the biggest mistake that I've made? I, I can think of two big ones. So one was human error or lack of judgment, common sense. And the other one was an accident. So both mistakes in different ways. One of my favorite pieces I've ever made was a floral chest of drawers. In fact, it was one of my first videos as well. And the mistake I made on it, which even thinking of it now, I think, how did that happen? But it did. Um, I was reattaching the handles because I needed to pull them out to attach more of the furniture transfer to it. And despite knowing that there were two handles on each set of drawers, I decided to put one handle right in the middle. So I could easily pull out the drawers so I could attach my transfer. And then when I realized a handle does not go in the middle, there's two at the side, and I've just got to remove it, <laughs> fill in the gap where I've now put a handle hole, and then go over my beautiful finish. So lesson learned on that one, just, you know, slow down a little bit and think about what you're doing before you do it. Secondly, the mistake I made, I was moving a chest of drawers with a mirror attached into a different position and crash, the mirror landed on the floor. So this just had a snowball effect because once the mirror was gone, the frame then had to come out, which left holes in the top of the drawers, which meant that I couldn't leave it natural wood anymore because I had holes in there. So that had to be painted. So there was this chain of events that led to having to paint the chest of drawers when I wasn't initially intending to. It no longer had a mirror, so it looks completely different. And I loved the result, but I had to adapt to get that result, so. So when do you top coat a piece? Now for me, this is a very simple answer, but I do know that chalk paint fans might disagree with me. And I always seal my pieces of furniture, especially if I'm selling them, but basically just always anyway, because I can't bear the idea of all the hours of work that goes into sanding, potentially priming, painting, to just like leave it vulnerable and exposed even with the super duper paints that say they've got top coat built into them. For me, it's just not worth the risk of undoing all my hard work and seeing it slowly chip away. How do you choose what color to paint a piece of furniture? And again, I have a really in-depth blog post about this, so I can summarize a few of the key points. Now, firstly, I want to start with saying, if you love a color and want to paint something that color, go for it. I think that is absolutely a valid reason to paint something bright pink or whatever you think an outrageous colour might be. But if you're not in love with a particular colour that you want to paint something and you want some inspiration, then things you can think about are what is trendy at the moment, and this again, it either can be trendy to look nice in your own home, or trendy because you want to sell it and therefore other people are looking for similar things. 
Also think about any accent pieces that you might be putting on the furniture. So if you've got a piece of decoupage paper, a furniture transfer, or is it going against a particular coloured wall? Do you want to incorporate a bit of that colour as well so that it pairs together nicely? Or contrast with it so it really makes it stand out and is bold. So think about the overall picture of the furniture you're creating or the setting for where it's going to and that might lead you into a particular colour. One of the most popular questions I get asked is how is my front door holding up? So I painted my UPVC front door about eight months or so ago and I'm very happy and relieved to say that it's holding up great. You'll see it from time to time when I make my various seasonal wreaths throughout the year but yeah the actual door is looking good as new and I'm very happy with it. What has been my most difficult project? Well I can tell you that my most difficult project you haven't seen yet because it keeps getting push back down the priority list because it has issues that I don't know how to solve. So for example I've got a chest of drawers with a locked drawer and I don't know how to open the lock. So that has been in my shed for too long while I try and figure out what to do about it when other projects which are maybe easier or at least easier to start uh, get bumped up the pile. So the most difficult projects I'll tell you when they come up but yeah, really tricky ones. What things should you avoid when upcycling furniture? This basically boils down to two things, your competence levels and your confidence levels. For me, I won't touch anything with lead paint in it, or you can get a professional to take care of it. It's something I just don't want around my home. So that is a no-go for me. If you're someone that is not confident or doesn't want to use power tools, for example, then you might want to avoid bigger projects such as that need structural changes. Think about can you do the project with what you know and the tools you have already? Do you have to learn something? Do you want to learn something? Do you have to invest in a new tool to get started? It's completely fine not to want to spend money on new tools or not really fancy learning that skill right now. In which case, just leave the project for someone else. Do I only paint furniture? That's a good question because if you blinked you may have missed it because there's just one video on my channel where I have restored some furniture to its natural and original look. And the challenge with this piece was that they had added some additional handles at some stage. So actually by taking away those extra handle holes and trying at the same time to restore it to a wooden look, I then had to try and hide those holes and match it into a wood finish. So it actually turned out really well, but it was a challenge I wasn't expecting to be dealing with when removing that pretty bad grey paint. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some answers to questions that you may have had. And in fact, I'll leave some links to some blog posts below that give so much more information than I can ever remember to say on a video about various different topics that might be helpful for you. Okay. Thank you for watching, until next time, bye.